the key to artificial intelligence has always been the representation so hello and welcome i'm your host dr ruby gill and i welcome you all on the behalf of lovely professional university so attendees you might be wondering the reason of gathering virtually so let me reveal the reason of this master class in which we have our expert who is going to tell us all about demystifying ai in business so before uh, we commence i would like to introduce the expert the master of this master class who is dr rajesh verma senior dean and professor of strategy and marketing at mithil school of business lovely professional university an intellectual professional whose research and teaching interest entails areas like business model strategic management and political marketing he is wireless certified design thinking practitioner and conducted numerous training programs on design thinking selling skills changing business models brand building and in uh, brand building and customer orientation for corporates like indian oil reddington a uh, tt consultant and many other renowned mncs Furthermore, he has acted as a resource person in more than sixty faculty training programs focusing on new age teaching pedagogies and research. To his credit, he is recipient of Research Appreciation Award from Ms. Smriti Zubin Irani, former Minister of Human Resource Development, Government of India. As an ingenious researcher and writer, he has published. 20 business case studies 60 plus research papers in renowned journals and six chapters in refereed edited books he has authored two books and edited four books as well under his supervision seven phd and 10 mphil students got the research guidance in the, the list goes on and on he has visited countries like uk spain Portugal, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Thailand, and Dubai for various academic and administrative projects. So, sir, it's a privilege to have you on board with us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, but let me uh, tell the audience that probably I am a person of strategy and marketing, and uh, technology is not my area. but then i understand technology from the perspective of business and that's what i'll be speaking about today so thank you very much uh, for inviting me here and uh, thank you all for joining in this webinar and as i said i would not be touching upon the technology part of artificial intelligence but i'll be talking about the business dimension of artificial intelligence and uh, that's where uh, i come from though in artificial intelligence we have two dimensions one pure technology and other the application in business right so today i'll be talking about the application in business so if i ask you a small question uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word artificial intelligence and i'm sure uh, uh, most of us would probably uh, have an image of some technology in the mind or a robot probably in the mind uh, because that's how uh, if you search google and that's how if you remember a few past things you will remember that artificial intelligence is related more to the robots and that's how it started was that i hope you all would remember uh, this movie terminator which was very very popular and way ahead of uh, the technology the person who visualized this uh he was a robot right so he, but then he was thinking he was uh, behaving like humans so that's the reason probably when we think of artificial intelligence something like that come in our mind and to add upon to that uh, we have another indian uh, movie which was an indian robot uh, chitty right rajnikanth the superstar of south probably have acted in this and and that's how the image of uh, artificial intelligence uh, when we talk of the image of robots working uh, comes to our mind and nothing wrong in it but then that's a very very uh, advanced version of artificial intelligence 
and but you don't see them around right so as of now you don't see these people around so what do we see around in artificial intelligence that's what we are going to talk about but this is what generally we feel and whenever i talk to anybody about artificial intelligence uh, they generally talk about robots replacing our jobs or robots replacing most of the in most of the work which probably the businesses are doing today so so that's that's how probably these two uh, heroes have brought this image in our mind but it's not only about these two heroes there are several uh, hollywood movies which have uh, worked upon this concept of machines thinking like humans and in india also there have been now many movies where we have started making movies on this concept where the machines the robots have started thinking and behaving like what humans do so i'm sure that this is uh, just to start with but then uh, what you saw in the movie is not what you are seeing in the movie only but in a hotel in japan which is all robot managed hotel right so you the image of lady you see here uh, is a robot which is standing in the front office to welcome the guests and do all the formalities which generally in all other uh, restaurants or hotels a human being do she is doing it so so that it's that means whatever you have seen in the movies is not in the movies but it's reality also right so science fiction became science fact so something which somebody might have visualized at that time and created a fiction created story out of it is now a fact right so so artificial intelligence and all those things which are coming to your mind and if which even not coming to your mind you cannot even even imagine of they are already there and the power of that uh, machine uh, will continuously keep on growing with a speed which is unimaginable right the learning tendency of a machine is something which is very very uh, high and it is unimaginable and i think uh, the discussion would not be uh, complete if i don't talk about a new chat gpt right so you would have heard this word chat gpt which is an uh, uh, kind of search engine which probably can do a lot of things which you can ask him but then how it is different from google uh, can be a question but let us say if you ask google write me a poem it can write you a poem right but then if you tell google write me a poem with this 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 characteristics it probably would not give you a very accurate kind of information but on chat gpt if you go that valentine day is on 14th i want to write a poem for my girlfriend and she is white in color and i would like to you to use rose in the in the in the text give her give the give the chat gpt a lot of complications right so you say add rose add sweets add chocolates add something else and it would create a wonderful poem for you within seconds so which means that probably a machine which was earlier not thinking with so much of complexities now chat gpt is giving you all those answers which a human being can quickly comprehend and that that's what the power of uh, artificial intelligence is right so so that's where i i'm sure if most of you would be now now have heard about chat gpt but uh, if you have not heard about it google it and you will find what is the kind of power and there is a lot of debate going on around the the world now on whether it would help us or it would uh, be negative because academicians like us have started debating whether students would ask the chat gpt to write the assignment and it is difficult for a professor like us to come out and say that okay this is created by chat gpt or this is created by the person right on the other hand there are also discussion now that the assignments submitted by the students are also being evaluated by professors using chat gpt so there is a lot of discussion a lot of debate going on around it uh, whether it is good for us or not good for us so this mystery right so this mystery around this word of uh, artificial intelligence look at this these kind of questions which are written there right uh, on on your screen do we feel a being subordinate to a non human form of intelligence let us say if robots start working they would be more efficient than me so what would happen to me or would we be the masters of this technology would they behave the way i want them to behave right 
would they help us in eradicating poverty or diseases right from the world will there be no accidents on the road right because we have not talking about uh, driverless cars which are intelligent enough to see uh, whether somebody is crossing the road or not crossing the road sensing uh, the other car from a distance right sensing everything around it from 360 degree angle so probably there would be less accidents or not right and so so this, this is a lot of questions everyone has right so this is a lot of mystery around but either way whether it is going to help us or it is not going to help us probably most of us are all right now dealing with this mystery right so so a lot of things a lot of debate going on this around right but i'll give you one idea on uh, how the debate is how generally debates are crystallized around you you see a ship in a storm here right but then when i'm talking about whether artificial intelligence would be for the good of society or it would not be good for the society both sides we have people who are talking at the extremes so there are people who says no we can use it for healthcare for education for a lot of problems which the world has and we can use it to eradicate those problems right out of world but on the other hand there are people who are saying that this would probably kill the human race right you had seen this in the movie that sometimes when the robot which is created by the scientist goes out of his hand also right so he doesn't behave the way scientists ask him to behave right so that means he can lead can lead to destruction it may not physically attack on us the way it is shown in the movies but the speed with which the artificial intelligence manifests itself probably can get out of the control of humans right so, so it may not deliberately would like to create a harm for us but then we might be left behind right and second hand on the other hand we are also trying to debate that probably if machine has to write a poem for me what would happen to my creativity if machine has to do everything so what would be my creativity right so 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 that's how there are a lot of debates going on it but then I, I, why i'm giving you this image here which is of a ship so let us see this it's a story behind it that there are few people who were traveling on the ship right and there were three category of people on the ship so one category was very very pessimist they thought kidney now we are going to down now the ship will sink this is now next five minutes we will all die they are pessimistic right and then there are optimistic people who were feeling over optimism optimism right so so we are just going to reach now the shore but jayenge right somebody would save us we are just about to reach right so so there over optimism it was there on the category third category of people who were on the ship were realistic people who were trying to analyze the situation how we are going to do it and how we will reach it whether what is the kind of weather now whether the storm would go down or not trying to look at the instruments right so they were trying to do this so finally the realistic people decided that these pessimistic people who are saying we will die now we are dying now are creating fear so they pick them up and threw them into the sea right over optimistic people were also trying to create a scenario of distress because when they were saying oh there is a shore we are about to reach the shore the others were, were getting hopeful and then the hope was not fulfilled and they used to get distressed right disturbed about it so they also picked them up and threw them into the into the sea right so the only people who finally reached the shore was the realistic lot of people so why i shared this story with you is that every time when there is a change which is happening there are these three kind of people right so so every one is which will say no this will revolutionize everything this will change everything other would say this will kill everything this will destroy everything but there is a middle path also right where we have to see what this technology is doing right now and how we can utilize this technology for the best and what is going to be the future of this technology so my my approach would be the middle one and i'll try to see so i'm not taking the extreme part uh, on the both the sides but i'll try to take the middle path when i'm trying to explain to you this this technology but there is no doubt about it that this technology is one of the most disruptive technology of this era and this will change a lot of things all around us right and artificial intelligence is all around us some of us might still feel that what is this artificial intelligence there is some technology some some computers some softwares right something like this but don't look at it from that perspective 
artificial intelligence has already made inroads into our lives and for every day working what we are doing it is with us and we are using it right the only thing is some of us are probably not aware of us it is all around us right now and i'll give you some examples of it right? chatting with ai some of you might have uh, apple right so you would know what cd is some of you would have alexa right so you would know amazon alexa what what it is right and most of us would have uh, if not anything else siri or alexa we would have google assistant so uh, let us say if you have asked your uh, amazon alexa to play a song for you and she will play a song for you right the robot or the machine which you have purchased and kept in your home you ask anything to play and uh, they will play it for you right and how they play it for you is it is connected to internet and probably it would uh, get connected to that uh, system and that answers come to you and it keeps on improving itself the answers get some better the more you interact with it the answer gets better or you have asked siri to give you information and siri gives you information right about the weather about whatever you want to ask to siri siri probably would give you uh, the information right so for example uh, siri would give it or you go to google assistant and you uh, ask google assistant and google assistant would give you more of, most of the answers how is it is happening right so how it is happening this is all and i i'm sure now by now you have realized that it is all around us we when we don't know that we are uh, uh, using artificial intelligence but then any time you ask google something there is one form or another of artificial intelligence which is being used to give you the answers and how it is happening right so so probably a term which you might not have heard but is uh, natural language processing right the machine understands what i am saying right the way we understand if i am speaking to you you are understanding my emotions you are understanding my words the machine also is understanding it the same way and probably trying to answer you in that way but how it understands is the the back end part of technology which i said i probably would not touch upon because that's more of and technical dimension of it which but then i'll not speak about that much but then this is how it is right so any every time you giving a command that command goes to some computer which is internet connected and it generates the answer for you answer is sent back to you every time you keep on asking the question to siri or google assistant or alexa they keep on improving the answers and they keep on becoming smarter and smarter right and that's why this machine is known that the way we keep on learning from our experiences these machines also keep on learning from the experiences and that's how they start giving us uh, smart answers right every time we do something with them they learn something from us every time i do um, uh, something on uh, google the google understands my behavior much better than what he had done it last times and and every time it is improving its services to me then based upon that learning right so it is all around you second example probably if you look at is watching tv with ai right so you can give a command sitting at your home turn the tv on and please play something new that i like how does the tv know that what do you like right how does netflix know how does the, the channel knows that what do you like right and that's again time and again because you have been watching and they have been recording your patterns at what time do you watch more do you watch the uh, web series at one stretch or do you watch web series with breaks right do you like advertisements in between or do you don't you like advertisements in between right uh, how much duration do you watch at one go they are watching you everything and what kind of web series do you watch and it is making your life easier and how does it make your life easier because when you go on to the netflix or when you go on to any tv channel they probably have a list of hundreds of web series there hundreds of movies there hundreds of documentaries there so if you have to search what do you like it would be very difficult for you to scroll down all of them and then choose one for you but based upon your behavior in past the machine itself is suggesting you that this is a new web series for you right and the more web series you watch the more netflix is coming to know that what kind of feels do you like do you like thrillers do you like romantic movies do you like what kind of things do you like so that means this machine is again getting smarter and smarter and smarter and they are responding to you the way probably a person would have responded so 
or look at the another example which is hitching a ride with artificial intelligence right so uber right how does how do they know right where do you stand so there is, it's not only one technology it's a mixture of a lot of technologies working together for you right so gps for example but then they know what time you would travel what time the message has to come to you which kind of drive do you like right which kind of car do you travel more and they would show you probably those kind of things which probably uh, uh, you generally use on that uh, app but that app is not only a piece of the uh, a, a mobile with you but that's a whole lot of technologies uh, inbuilt into that which actually uber is using to give you customized services right so so all these engines don't stop right so let us say for example i was giving an example of netflix right so netflix doesn't stop at recommending you a movie right or these channels would not stop only at recommending you a movie the time is there that when some of them have already started creating a content for you right what kind of content do you like to watch and you can create a content i was talking about chat gpt and you can ask chat gpt create an image for me with a luxury car trees all around water and road and it will create an image for you right it will create a painting for you yeah. so but then all all these things which which are happening all around you probably are not a surprise now right but the only thing is we don't relate that this is what artificial intelligence is doing or look at this example shopping with artificial intelligence right earlier how do you do it right if let us say if you see somebody's shoes you had to go to the person and ask that person that please tell me where did you bought this shoes from i'll also go to that store and buy it now you can click an image and the google or that uh, image assistant would tell you that this is the kind of store where this shoe is available or in this kind of share there are another pair of shoes which are different color what is the kind of price and they'll give you every detail of it right so so, so how does it let us say take it as a simple example earlier when we didn't have this uh, uh, facility of searching with images right what would you do right so you go to the store and then you ask them give me shoes which are green in color probably had a strap on it and it is very difficult for the salesman to understand what kind of shoes do you want but what you were trying to do is you were trying to remember which kind of shoes did you see and you were trying to give that image in the minds of the seller that this is the kind of shoe i want but you remembering that image translating that image to the shopkeeper how difficult it is right but then still because your brain is functioning and you can do it so when a uh, uh, when you click an image how is it that this machine searches all kind of shoes available in that category from all over the world and give it to you in fraction of seconds so is it smarter than us or it is not smarter than us you going to one store searching for one pair of same shoes become so difficult but the machine searching so many shoes for you all same size all same pattern but different colors different price different stores giving it to you in a fraction of a second right so sometimes it and that's the reason i told in the beginning that ai is something which is beyond imagination how it works behind is beyond imagination right so what is ai so, so <clears throat> to define ai now i think you have got a hold of that probably i am dealing with a lot of ai now right there is a lot of ai which is working on us also now so artificial intelligence is a broad term that refers to any type of computer software that engages in human like activity including learning planning and problem solving right so it's a machine right so so the image i am showing you here that's the reason uh, most of the time the robot comes to our mind when we think of artificial intelligence but then it's a type of computer software right so it's, it don't it need not be in the shape of a robot that engages in human like activities that means it does the activities like what i do what you can do right including learning planning and problem solving so that means it can do things the way our brain does and if you look at this again uh, a few more lines you can go through ai is the theory and development of computer system able to perform tasks that normally requires human intelligence earlier what was machine what was computer we used to switch on the computer and then give command and it used to work like what we used to say right but now it is saying no 
it can also work the way you are working on its own right so look at the tasks such as visual perceptions speech recognition decision making under uncertainty learning and translation between languages right when i traveled abroad uh, earlier when i used to travel abroad it was very different difficult to talk to people who didn't know english right but now you can have the translator used and it is so easy to use that translator how it is being done so that that how it is being done is the the, the thinking of a machine how it does one small piece of telephone can actually translate your uh, english language into n number of languages you cannot even think of right so it has made our travel easy it has made our, our communication easy right but ai is not a new idea right so its term itself was uh, coined in 1950s but somehow because of some reasons it did become become popular but in uh, 20th century uh, sorry around, around 2000 after that it has gained a huge momentum and in last decade probably it has grown exponentially it has grown exponentially right a harvard processor uh, defines it as machine that can think and act in that matches or surpasses human intelligence right so it says it's a machine that can think and act like us but it is not only matching it can also surpass our human intelligence we are thinking we are creating this machine but this machine is surpassing us and one of the complex thing i am sure all of you uh, would believe that chess is a very complex game right but there are a lot of moves which you have to think of a lot of rules you have to keep in mind and then you have to play with the competitor but look at this uh, kasparov in 1997 probably was was one of the champions in chess was uh beaten by deep blue which is a machine right so machine was taking the moves based upon what move you you never know what move i would take right but then the machine was behaving based upon the op opponent playing and he lost the game and that's where probably most of us actually started thinking this was one of the first example which i probably had heard about machine and human conflict right that was the first example i have ever heard right so so that's probably thing. but then on the other hand look at this chess robot grabs and breaks finger of child opponent because he didn't follow a rule a 7 year old boy was playing chess with a robot right and robot grabs his fingers and breaks them why did he do that because the even the developer says i we are not able to figure it out but then probably because the seven year old has already took his turn but he was once again trying to do something with the chess board and the robot stopped him and that way of stopping probably was so rash that it has and this is only july 26 2022 last year's news so good and bad about both right there are good and bad both in this but then still things are moving ahead right and when there are good and bad but look at this this i'll give you few statistics uh, for next one minutes time right uh, about 77% of the devices used today have some sort of ai enabled feature do we know this a washing machine probably might have an artificial intelligence feature right our tv have artificial intelligence feature our mobile phone a laptop right all these have some artificial intelligence ai enabled features right so and the global market is projected to be usd 60 billion by 2025 huge companies today have access to more data than ever before right and this is no nothing surprising right because everything is digital right we do digital uh payments we are buying everything online right so every we are talking i'm talking to you online and this is creating all digital database right so look at this according to forbes the amount of data created and consumed increased by 5000% between 2010 and 2020 look at the growth the global artificial intelligence market size was worth 62 billion in 2022 and expected to grow at annual rate of 40.2 from 2021 to 2028 phenomenal growth and 56% of respondents in mckinsey survey said that probably the adoption of we will adopt uh, ai more right so and it went up by 50% that's the kind of data being used 
A Censure report says 84% of the executives think that they would use live AI and this usage of AI will help them achieve their growth objectives. So a very positive uh, environment all around that this AI can help companies achieve a lot of uh, profitability and it can help them increase their productivity. So a lot of, lot of uh, uh, positivity all around about this technology. Right? But then for the people who don't understand this technology and who are uh, not proactive in understanding this technology, moving ahead with this technology, they probably have that fear also in mind that we would be lost behind. Right. So when I say demystifying AI, uh, AI is collection of several popular fields which you might have heard of machine learning, data science, natural process, uh, language processing, analytics, right? Now, all this, right? But they work together, right? And they create a cognition, they create a mind in the machine, right? And which gives you the responses the way a human gives. So it's, it's a sum total of a lot of things, machine learning, data science, NLP, analytics, right? So it's a sum total of a lot of dimensions. And I quickly, if I tell you, what is machine learning? I, I'm not going into details of it, but then machine learning, right? Artificial intelligence, data science, or natural language processing or AI analytics, right? What is machine learning? The name indicates machine is learning on its own. Remember our days in the school kids, right? When teachers used to say, practice it, practice it, practice it, right? In mathematics, probably they say, right? The more you practice it, the more you will be uh, efficient about it, right? Same is machine learning. The time and again, you ask machine to do something, it keeps on uh, learning something and then next time the process becomes better. So machine learning, right? That's how the, it's not that easy, which I uh, said, but then that's how uh, this term uh, probably itself explains machine, what machine learning is. Data science, a lot of analytical techniques coming together. Natural language processing, I told you, the way I can understand your emotion when I listen to you, the machine also can extract a lot of information about what is I am posting on Facebook and they can tell me whether I am positive about a product or I am negative about a product. So they can understand my emotions. That's like, like natural language processing. Plus AI analytics, the most used in the industry right now, right? A lot of uh, statistics being used to uh, project things, right? For example, simplest example is that if I am buying, uh, every month I am buying two products of a, a, a product, the company can very well say, looking at my pattern of buying, that in the next three months also, I'll keep on buying two, 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 right? So, so, so all that is analytics, right? So AI is all around in all industry sectors. There is no sector which is left untouched. For example, in banking, it can detect fraud detections. In healthcare, it can, uh, it can, it is using automatic speech recognition, right? When doctor is saying something, doctor doesn't have to write on its own, right? So the machine is listening to what doctor is saying. And finally, when the, the analysis is over, he can give a printout of the slip to the patient, right? So doctor is not wasting his time on writing, but he's just speaking it and the machine is understanding and writing and giving the prescription to the, to the patient, right? In life sciences, it can predict cause and effect relationship for biological data. In media and entertainment, it can, uh, draft articles on its own. For example, I was talking about chat GBT. Now I can ask chat GBT that if I have to write an article for a magazine, I, I myself don't write it, but then I ask chat GBT to write an article on this topic using these, this, 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 this keywords, and it will do it for me. Oil and gas, where do, where are the minerals more? So I have to diagnose some mechanical problems, drilling equipments, all can be done by uh, using artificial intelligence or what are retailers doing about it right so re retailers can say okay every time i come to the store he buys this right but sometimes he also buys this so next time when i go there they can give me a suggestion buy this and this right so see, it can promote more products right so a lot of things which are happening all around all around sectors right so i'm just trying to give you any picture that a lot of things happening and in almost every sector but quickly, I'll give you five more applications of it, how the businesses are using AI, uh, because that's what I told you that today I'll try and restrict myself to applications of AI. First application is personalizations, and all of you would have seen this. When you go on to Amazon to buy something, 
there is a column which or there is a scroll which comes there which says recommended for you so how why does amazon recommend me and how does it recommend to me so right amazon is following you you are following you on social media it's following you everywhere and it understands your pattern based upon that pattern he says okay probably when you come here these are the things probably you will look for so that's recommending you right so netflix recommends you movies right every time you go there so that's personalizing it is personalizing things for you second process automation rpa we call it is robotic process automation let us say i am a farmer right and i plant a tree and i have to give it water right so I, every day morning i give it water every day morning i give it water but can i do it that i can write a program and the tap switches itself on at every day 6 o'clock and switches it off in 2 minutes so that process which i was trying to do now i am trying to automate that process but then it is also intelligent process right and all companies like deloitte ibm microsoft linkedin they have been using it to do away with their tasks which machine can do right so they are retaining the human talent for the tasks which only humans can do but rest all process they are trying to automate and that too little in, in an intelligent way right customer service i don't know if you would have now started noticing it but then every time you earlier when we had a website or when we had to go and order something there is a uh, right hand side probably comes up a pop up that may i help you and so sometimes you thought that we are probably writing here a question and somebody is sitting there on the other side is answering the question right but now that's something which is automated all automated right chatbots it's it's machine which is answering your questions and how do we answer it so perfectly right that's what artificial intelligence is right so so that means whenever you are trying to internet i'm i'm sure uh, the time would come when you call your home and you call your mother but you're not sure whether your mother is answering or whether the mobile phone uh, has started answering it on behalf of your mother right so that's the kind of things probably we would have in future so customer services right so so and most of the customer questions are generally in a pattern right so if i say that we have 100 complaints received out of 100 complaints it it would be only five categories right so that's how the machine understand the patterns and and tries and have standard answers and they can give on that right but standard answers if you are doing it then it it, it is not an exactly an artificial intelligence but artificial intelligence would be when the it when the machine would use your nlp natural language processing and all the data stored in it to create an answer on its own to a customer query right so, so that's the kind of customer service or it would increase the output right for example forbes uh, uh, report says that nissan is actually using ai to design new model in real time and that model would shorten their uh, manufacturing period and if you read this uh, something which is written here 78% of the businesses that employ ai will improve operational efficiency so if you improve your operational efficiency your cost goes down and you make more money right so it would increase your output and one example case study which i have been talking of netflix i said they had a problem in 2017 when they increased price the market started declining and subscribers started going away right so then if company wanted to retain them so the company used ai right to understand what is that they would like to stay for right and they started showing them that those images those uh, uh, web series more more giving them more recommendations and today you see that netflix is doing so good though they had a problem last year also but then uh, they have been doing so good but then only because of this reason of using artificial intelligence they probably saved 1 billion dollar a year kind of an uh, loss which they would have incurred otherwise right and the the last part probably is the ai uh, is data analysis this is most common use right most common use look at this diagram if you look at most basic is descriptive analytics that means difficulty level is also low the value of for the company and value of information is also low but then this can be done by anything right but go on the higher side 
where we are saying predictive analytics or prescriptive analytics. What will happen and how can we make it happen? The way people think about, right? I'm thinking about what can happen tomorrow and what will I do to stop that? The machine is doing that for me. That is the highest level, right? So Google is now able to perform tasks with AI based on the analysis of information. They can do it. There are a lot of machines which can do it. Right. For example, the example mentioned here is, let us say, if Google knows my home address, he knows my calendar entries. So if how far is airport, they know. Now Google gives me a suggestion that if you want to catch a flight at three o'clock, you have to start at one o'clock. Right. Predictive. They are trying to give me prescription. Prescription. This is how you have to do it. Right. So I think uh, what I tried to do today uh, uh, was that I said I'll not touch upon the technology side. But because we were trying to be misfy the AI and business dimension, so I gave you an idea on uh, how it has become a part of my life, your life, and then probably where all it is being used, and then what all it is being used for, right? So that's what I talked about. Uh, but then I uh, believe that this technology has a lot of potential. It is still not used. It is still in developing form, right? And it will keep on improving itself. But the coming time would be very, very exciting. But then if we have to uh, feel comfortable with this technology, we will have to remain one step ahead and understand this technology and master this technology so that we can use it for good, right? Whereas there are n number of shortcomings, there are n number of shortfalls which we can see that this technology has. But then probably uh, looking at the positive side, I am hopeful that this technology probably would uh, revolutionize a lot of things which still are untouched. So thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for the patient hearing. If you have any questions, you can uh, mention them in Q&A session. And I think there are uh, one Rupam Sony who has asked question, when will it be possible with AI to work on instructions like please earn 500 rupees or 1000 rupees from stock market investment within an hour? And I'm sure uh, uh, Rupam, uh, this is though I'm sure this would get regulated, but these are already created. This has already been created. What you're talking about has already been done. In some of the countries you search for it and you would say that machine would probably can do wonders in this stock market right but then uh because every, if you leave everything onto the machine then the negative dimensions of the machine would also come into play so there would be a lot of restrictions on how we use this technology but what you are saying is already has been developed and a lot of people would have already experimented it with it but then i'm saying in a controlled environment i'm not saying as of now that they have started earning about it but then they have proved that this is how this technology can earn money for you also. Uh, I have another question, which is though not related. Uh, sir, please tell us about the importance of ECA in MBA. And I think uh, the, uh, not question related to this, but then uh, ECA is a body which probably gives you certification in accounting, right? And uh, in MBA, there is a big field probably which uh, needs people with accounting background, a lot of accounting background. And those fields probably you might be talking about fintech or you might talk about financial sector or you might talk of consulting. All big consulting firms like KPMG, ENY, Deloitte, all these people need people with an ECA background, right? An ECA certification. Right. So, but then uh, now there are MBA programs which have integrated ACA and uh, into their curriculum. So, otherwise, uh, MBA and ACA they are two separate things. But then now there are programs where the ACA certification has been integrated into MBA. You have to give the external examination though. But the curriculum which is part of ACA is now made part of um, the MBA also. Right. So that's how probably it's a one of uh, wonderful domain which is catching up. And I'm sure would have wonderful careers also. So I had two questions. Uh, if we have any other question, you can ask me, and I'll be happy to answer uh, if I know the answers. 
But if you don't have any questions, you can always note down my details, which are given there. I'm all available on LinkedIn, Insta, Facebook, wherever you would like to find me, I'm available. And uh, probably uh, you can ask me anything related to what I've talked today or beyond that also if you would like to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much for the patient here. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, for your insight and guidance, uh, your expertise and knowledge is exactly what students needed today to move forward and grow exponentially. So thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. And uh, yes, sir, we have uh, queries coming up from the attendees. Uh, so there is another query, I think, the, from the same uh, student. Yeah, I, I, I see. I saw it. So yes, sir. you're saying which is better, MBA or ECA? You see, uh, it's a question of choice. There is no comparison between uh, MBA, ECA or MBA, right? So nothing like that, which one is better. But then I told you that even uh, if you feel that you are divided between which, which one you should go in for, I'm saying look for an MBA, which is also giving you an integrated ECA also, right? So nothing like which is better. If you are going into purely international certification, you want to go into purely an international certification, go for ECA. But if you want to keep yourself uh, open for a lot of managerial positions, right? And uh, your uh, plus into the accounting domain also, then, then MBA is also a good choice. So it would ultimately depend upon what kind of profile you are looking forward for. Um, but otherwise, there is, uh, I won't see any comparison between these two. You Both the programs have their own advantages, right? Thank you so much, sir, for resolving the query of our attendees. So there is another uh, query our attendee wants to know that what kind of challenges which you have faced in your academic life, which you think LPU student or the student who is approaching the university will not face. So any take uh, anything sir, on this? Yeah, I think um, uh, I would feel that uh, I would say that probably the uh, generation today and uh, who would like to come to an university like LPU, they are lucky to get such an environment. When I did my master's MBA, probably uh, one, we didn't have the exposure uh, in terms of, uh, we probably had an MBA, which probably our professor used to come and teach and deliver and we used to learn from that. Right? But at LPU, what we are doing is it's not only about what professors teach, but we also give a lot of opportunities to the student to work on live projects. So now you are actually learning something in the class, but you are also implementing it outside, right, in the field. So which is which is something which is uh, uh, which was missing from what what we did right uh, at that time. So that's that's this, uh, the biggest thing which I feel because ultimately. It is the application and that's how you, you are actually enhancing your employability. Because when we went to, I, I joined Standard Chartered Bank after MBA, but probably I found a lot of disjoint between what was taught to us and what was happening in the, in the bank. Not because uh, the concepts which were taught to us were not relevant. They were relevant and could have been applied and we applied those concepts, but then the working there was totally different, which was very surprising for us. So it took us a lot of time to adjust to that environment. But now if let us say if somebody is doing an MBA from LPU and he's already doing a live project with a bank or he's doing a live project with a company, but when he goes to the, the same kind of industry, he knows that how that industry works. So that's the biggest thing I think uh, is the benefit if a student is joining an institution like LPU. Absolutely. So I completely agree with you. Uh, so with this, I want to ask another question. So as we are discussing about this, AI, that's kind of digitalization or advancements in this, uh, I would say the, which, the courses which we have earlier, like the BBA, MBA courses, all the man management core courses, and we are talking about how these can be digitalized. So, sir, if I'm a, um, let's suppose I'm a beginner, I'm a student who is just joining the university and completed my uh, secondary education. So how it would be easier to grab this or how it would be easier uh, uh, to uh, sustain all these information as a beginner in our university at LPU. So how it will, how I can cope up with all this? I think uh, Ruby, it's a wonderful question because it, it would be in a lot of uh, students' mind that when we have started talking about technology and 
they wanted to come into a business course which probably earlier was not related to technology let me tell you now all our programs specifically in mba and uh, other programs uh, we have now specializations in artificial intelligence machine learning right uh, e-commerce all this we are giving as specialization to the students and apart from specializations we have technology oriented courses in the program right every student has to do technology course like for example data analytics through python now everybody has to do it right so it has now become a reality that it's not that technology is separate and management is separate but then on the other hand the way i said in this presentation that i am not touching the technology part i am only touching the business part similarly when we do an mba and there we are using technology we are talking about application of technology understanding of technology so we are not doing the coding though we have that kind of specialization also for engineers but then we are not actually making students are coders right so we are not making them techno technologists right we are saying they are business and technology administrators so they should know how to use the technology they should know how somebody is using the technology so that they may not fool me tomorrow right so so, so that because i have to lead a team of engineers also so all the programs which we are now delivering at help you and mithil school of business it may be whatever program there is a lot of infusion of technology in those programs but then nothing to worry about it because uh, we would be starting from very basic and taking you to a, le a higher level and that too from the business perspective and not from the the coding perspective thank you so much sir for this detailed information sir uh, we'll take last but not the least question which i personally want to put up sir if you can uh, tell the audience our attendees in one or two lines that why lp why they should choose lp u for their higher education so what's your take on this sir in two or three lines if we want to conclude it i think uh, the first thing which i have already talked about is that if you really want to have an exposure which is practical in nature that's the reason you should be coming to us right second is that there is we have tried now uh, in almost all programs of our education that we have a lot of integration with the industry and along with the or normal masters program whichever masters program you do in sciences engineering management social sciences whichever engine program you decide to do we have a lot of industry certifications already inbuilt into the program that means if you do an uh, btech program uh, we have tied up with futurens and probably uh, they will give you a separate certificate apart from the btech degree which you are doing similarly in mba if you are doing uh, financial consulting uh, specialization then kpmg is the partner which is giving you a certificate and the university is also giving you a degree right so that means now you are getting certification from the industry also where you have to go and work right so when you are ready with a certificate from industry and a university the employability enhances right so this is another reason for which you should be joining lp third i strongly believe that for a overall enhancement of personality of a student the co curricular activities are very very important co very very important co curricular activities and lpu has created an ecosystem uh, which actually gives you an opportunity to work in any field you want to you want to go into cultural there are a lot of opportunities there are a lot of student clubs there are cultural clubs where you can join if you want to do sports i am sure you know that a lot of our uh, students have uh, won medals in olympics right and uh, they are doing wonders in at the national level so there are a lot of opportunities for you to create a career in sports also so there are a lot of activities which are happening so it's a very very vibrant campus and every student based upon his interest can choose which way he would like to develop himself right so i think that's the third reason why uh, somebody should be joining lp so first i said probably is a very live exposure practical exposure second i said a uh, lot of integration with the industry what industry is doing we are bringing that industry to our campus and third i said is that probably how do you ensure that you have a well all around personality groomed in the campus so we have we have created that ecosystem that when you move out of the campus i am sure you would uh, be a kind of a person who would have a lot of things to say about so so i think these three reasons on the 
top of the list, which we have a long list, but the top three, if you ask me, this is the top three. I completely agree with you, sir. And uh, attendees, I must tell you, if you want to enhance your CV, you must require uh, what sir has discussed in third point that you have to be uh, the part, uh, participate in extracurricular activities to enhance your CV with your academic um, uh, as well. So yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your guidance. And sir, with your permission, we'll conclude today's masterclass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir. So that's all for today. I would like to express my appreciation to the master of our master class, Dr. Rajesh Verma, sir, for his valuable contribution to our uh, master class on demystifying AI in business. So my deepest gratitude goes to all who attended this webinar and helped to make it such a successful one. The experts, sir, I'm sure your years of experience, your years of research will definitely help the attendees to choose the right path. So until next time, I, Rubikil, finally sign off the session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.